we can now solve a linear system of differential equations x prime equals ax if a does not have enough independent eigenvectors. We can use the Jordan canonical form and its matrix exponential function. And as you will see in this video, solving the system, system of differential equations is now not difficult at all anymore. So let's take a look at the following system, x prime equals a times x, where a is this matrix over here. And uh, in a previous video, we saw that a is similar to a Jordan canonical form uh, over here, 3, 3, and a 1, uh, with the following p. So it equals p times j times p inverse. So how are we going to solve the differential equation? We use a familiar trick. We uh, use a new coordinate, y equals p inverse times x. Why do we do that? Well, differentiate, you get y prime equals p inverse times x prime. Uh, p is a constant matrix, so uh, if you, differ, uh, you don't have to take the derivative. And then we know that uh, x prime equals a times x. So here we have an a, p times g a c f times p inverse times x. And you see these two cancel out. Uh, p inverse times x is again a y. Here we have a y. So what we uh, end up with is y prime equals gcf times y. Similar trick we have done before with, for example, a diagonal matrix. So what we uh, need to solve now first is a problem y prime equals gcf times y. And we will do two methods. First, we can use the matrix exponential function. Then we can write down the answer immediately. y of t equals e to the power gcf times t times y0 and e to the power the Jordan canonical form, if you have it already, that is uh, not difficult how to compute that. Uh, we did that as well in the previous video. We have it over here. So right away, you have your solution of your differential equation. So once you have your GCF, you immediately have the solution of your differential equation as well. We can also do it in a second way. Also nice to see with the integrating factor. So we do y prime equals G GCF times y. Start with the second equation. We have y2 prime equals 3 times y2. Immediately you have the answer, of course, because y2 is now scalar. So uh, y2 equals e to the power of 3t times the uh, initial condition. And then our second equation becomes y1 prime equals 3 times y1 plus y2. It's from this, uh, uh, this row over here. And we can solve that using an integrating factor. Put the uh, y1 on the other side. Then you get uh, y1 prime minus 3y1 equals this right hand side, which you already know. Uh, your integrating factor is e to the power uh, 3t, uh, uh, e to the power minus 3t in this case. So multiply the equation with e to the power minus 3t. Then its derivative is the left hand side, and on the right hand side you just end up with y to 0. Now you can integrate y1 e to the power minus 3t equals some constant plus integrate y right hand side. So you have your y1 is some constant times e to the power 3t plus this part. And uh, you uh, see if you put in t equals 0 that your constant is in fact y1 of 0. And you have exactly the same solution as you have over here. So two methods uh, to reach the same final solution. Now we have our y. Uh, but once we have our y, it's easy, of course, to find the x because y equals p inverse times x or x equals p times y. So there we go, x equals p times y. Uh, we have our y over here. For example, p is given over there. So there you have your x of t. And if you want, you can express y0 in terms of x0. So y and x are related via p. So y0 equals p inverse times x0. So this is your solution then fully only in terms of x 